Today is Monday, July 7, 2014. It's the 188th day of the year. There are 177 days remaining until the end of 2014. Sunrise today is at 5.14 a.m. The sun sets at 8.36 p.m. Length of daylight hours today is 15 hours, 21 minutes, 59 seconds, 1 minute, 5 seconds shorter than yesterday. Tomorrow will be 1 minute, 9 seconds shorter than today. The waxing gibbous moon rises today with 75.2% illumination at 3.30 p.m. and sets at 1.50 a.m. Tuesday. The moon passes today above downtown Rutland City at 235,950 miles distant from the center of planet Earth within the eighth zodiacal designation, Scorpio, the Scorpion. On this day in 1865, four conspirators in the assassination of President Abraham Lincoln are hanged. Shortly after 1.30 on the afternoon of July 7, 1865, the trap of the gallows installed in the courtyard of the old Arsenal building in Washington, D.C. is sprung, and the four condemned conspirators fall to their deaths. They are David Harold, Lewis Powell, George Atzerodt, and Mary Surratt, who runs the boarding house in which the conspirators live as they plot their crimes. She's the first woman hanged in the United States. One of the inner circle of conspirators escapes justice. John Surratt, 21 years old, Mary Surratt's son, flees the city on the night of April 15, 1865, immediately after the president is shot. After visiting Quebec and other places with the reward of $25,000 hanging over my head, I didn't think it safe to remain there, so I concluded to seek an asylum in foreign lands. I had nothing now to bind me to this country save an only sister, and I knew she would never want for kind friends or a good home. For myself, it mattered little where I went, so that I could roam once more a free man. Surratt hides out at saint Libar in southern Quebec, where a Catholic priest, Father Charles Boucher, offers him sanctuary. Soon, Surratt travels to Europe and serves in the Ninth Company of the Pontifical Zouaves of the Papal State, the Roman Pope's militia, using the name John Watson. Hounded, he travels to the Kingdom of Italy, then to Egypt, where he's arrested November 23, 1866, by U.S. officials and returned to the United States to stand trial. In summer 1867, two and a half years after the assassination, the jury deadlocks, unable to reach a verdict, with eight jurors voting not guilty and four voting guilty. In August 1867, Surratt is released from prison. Three years later, 1870, he begins a public lecture tour describing his association with the conspirators, justifying his behavior, proclaiming his innocence. As a band plays Dixie, his audience, outraged and disgusted, forces him from the stage. Surratt lives on, a free man, moves to Baltimore where he becomes a school teacher, weds, fathers ten children, enjoys 43 years of marriage, dies at the age of 72 in the new century, April 21, 1916. On this day in 1928, sliced bread is sold for the first time by the Chillicothe Baking Company of Chillicothe, Missouri. The machine used to slice bread in Chillicothe is the first of two prototypes built by Otto Frederick Rowetter of Davenport, Iowa. Rowetter's machine produces the first wrapped slices of white bread on this day, July 7, 1928. They call the product Clean Made Sliced Bread, clean with a K and two E's and made like a virgin girl. It's an immediate and enormous success, leading directly to a rapid increase in the consumption of white bread. The sight of sliced white bread on the family dinner table becomes a common sight for the first time. Shortly thereafter, within weeks, Rowetter sells his second prototype to Gustav Papendick of the St. Louis, Missouri-based Papendick Bakery Company. Papendick improves on the machine, designing an electrical mechanized system for wrapping the bread loaf immediately after the slicing process. Rowetter's machine is mass-produced with Papendick's improvements. The first major step forward is taken the same year when the Wholesome Bread Company, which bakes and distributes packaged white bread with independent bakeries throughout the United States, begins to market sliced white bread using the Rowetter Papendick machines. Two years later, in 1930, Wonder Bread joins the sliced white bread revolution. America never looks back. Americans, freed from the onerous and time-consuming task of slicing white bread by hand, one single slice at a time, now begin to eat pre-sliced white bread with every meal, often, but not too often, enjoying a sandwich or two between meals, thereby also increasing mass production and mass consumption of jams, jellies, peanut butter, cold cuts, 
and cheese. Born this day in 1891, Virginia Rappe, born Virginia Rapp, American model and actress. Known more for her death than for any accomplishment she might have achieved in life, is there in the St. Francis Hotel Room in San Francisco, September 9, 1921. She dies in a bedroom of that suite of rooms rented by the enormously popular silent film comedian Roscoe Fatty Arbuckle and two of his closest friends. Arbuckle is tried three times in the matter of her death, accused of rape and manslaughter. In the first two trials, the jury deadlocks. In the third, Arbuckle is acquitted. His career, however, never recovers. He dies in 1933 at the age of 46 in Hollywood. Author Vladimir Dabokov writes, Human life is but a series of footnotes to a vast, obscure, unfinished masterpiece. From Rutland, Vermont, this is Richard Alcott speaking.